Hi, this is Eric of Ion Software and welcome back to our courseware. In the last part of our courseware we created this window with those nice reflections here. I uh, cleaned up the flow a little bit so uh, it's easier for you when you download it to play around with it. What we wanted to do in this part of the tutorial is to line up that foreground element with our original scene here. To do that we obviously need a camera. So I add a camera to the flow and click on import camera. Navigate to the folder and select the Maya ASCII file here. That file was created with PF Matchit, a 3D tracking, actually a note based 3D tracker from uh, the Pixel Farm, but you can obviously get similar results with other 3D tracking packages like for example Buju, Synthize, PF Track, etc. 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 Well PF Matchit is a note based 3D tracker and obviously I'm quite into note based programs so I use that one. I select the camera O1 shape and hit OK. So the camera is imported now and what you see is this little key icon here. That means the camera is locked, which is good because it prevents me from modifying the camera accidentally when I view it in the viewport. So let's connect this with our merge. And actually what I want to do is I want to have a new merge 3D, so I just copy and paste that. And I also want to bring in a point cloud which helps me to orient myself in the scene. I click on import again and again I use the very same file created with PF Matchit and there I go with my point cloud. So let's zoom out a little bit and we have our camera here and obviously we need to move our original scene around to match the view of the camera. Let's open our second viewer here your scene. Actually I want to view this through the camera and then after my merge here I add a transform 3D tool and let me lock my projector as well and then I just take my transform 3D and start moving that around or you can do that in a quad view, you can do it in perspective view as I do here. I'm more a friend of the perspective view and there my window comes into place. Obviously I need to add a little bit of rotation here. Maybe move it out a little bit. That's well that's all you know personal liking or disliking matching the element to the camera. Well that's frame number one. Let's see how it looks at frame 100. And unfortunately the window seems to be way too small to encompass the uh, anti-camera movement. So I could either scale that up, but then again I would lose all these details and at the end of the day I would only see one or two of those window panes. I don't want that, so what I do is I make a little bit more room here, add another Merge 3D just for my projector because I want to take my entire scene, my entire window scene and add a duplicate 3D and from the earlier tutorial I pretty much know that an offset of two and one copy is what I'm looking for. So just duplicated my window and then back to my transform and adjust that a little bit and move it around well, that looks okay to me now. So, I have my camera moving over my window here, like so. Well, maybe just a tiny little bit adjustment here on the last frame. Yeah, that's it. Right, so what I then need to add is a 3D render which automatically renders my camera and I actually want to use the OpenGL renderer because it's much faster. And you will see that this is quite a difference and that's because in the texturing tab you have to set it to source so that uses the 32-bit float setup in the textures we built earlier on in the last tutorial. Let's merge that 
over our original shot and apparently we have to adjust the size so the original image is 1344 by 756 so let's type that into the renderer and this already looks quite nice let me view that on the left and switch to full screen and of course in the 3D renderer we also have to activate lighting so now you see all our reflections perfectly in place in front of the background scene here and you also see how nicely those reflections interact with the dirt map with uh, which we used as a bump map in this example. One more thing though, uh, the background still looks too clean to me and what I want to do is I want to take the bump map I created here and use it to displace the actual background so that it looks as if the glass in the foreground would you know add distortion to the background plate. To do that I add another tool and in this case it's a create bump map. Create bump map can be found in the filters menu and I take the output of my original dirt map here which I used for the bump map and in the create bump map I really bring the height scale up. Let's set that to 100. And what I want to do now is I want to apply this not as a map but as a texture to my original window and then add instances of these tools here and render out a second layer. So let's do that. We need a replace material node. We pipe our original window plane into the replace material and then pipe in the bump map tool here. I then need instances of a couple of these tools. So of course the duplicate 3D which I used to create that uh, second version of my window, the transform, I could also use the merge and the renderer as well. So I mark those tools up, hit Control C to copy and Control Shift V to create instances of the original tools and that means I can now simply pipe in my replace material here and in my renderer I want to de-instance the enable lighting button because in this case I don't need light at all but I have to pipe in my camera here. So what this gives me is an exact representation of the bump map mapped on the window so again I've got my camera following this map here one thing I need to do to use it as an actual map for the 2D displacement tool and uh, let's have a look at the waveform here so views waveform is to add brightness contrast because the normal displace tool expects values between minus 1 and 1 and the create bump map outputs values between 0 and 1 so I just bring the brightness down by minus 0.5 and you see it's clipped here and that's because my renderer is still set to 8 bits so let's bring that to 32 bit floating point and I get exactly what I'm looking for let's switch the view back to the 2D viewer and after my brightness contrast here I add a displace tool in this case a 2D displace tool and in that display tool I feed the output of the brightness contrast here. Now, I don't want to have a radial displacement but XY displacement which means I can use the red channel and the green channel independently to set up my X refraction and my Y refraction like so, now that looks good maybe a bit much actually but you can see that I'm really using the bump map of the original window and if I now combine this 
it looks much more believable because I have all those distortions going on here on the background plate as well. In the next tutorial I will show you a final trick how you can refine this. So uh, stay tuned. Until then, cheers!